Many of you have probably seen this video before. It's called Big Buck Bunny by the Blender Foundation. It's a 1080p video, and you're probably wondering why am I showing you this? Well, the reason I'm showing you this is this is running within Firefox on uh, Fedora, and it's running within a virtual machine. So I'm actually running Ubuntu, but it's the video that's playing in Fedora. So this just goes to show you the type of performance you can get when you're using the right tools. And in this case, I'm using QEMU with KVM and Vert Manager, the virtual machine manager. So I'm gonna show you how to set it up and how to install an operating system and some of the settings that you can tweak with it. So let's get started. Hey there, it's Dorian. Thanks for tuning into Dot Slash. Today I'm gonna cover Vert Manager the virtual machine manager and QEMU for use along with KVM in Linux using Linux as a host. So installing it is not hard, but if you look in the software centers for some reason, it just doesn't show up and I'm not sure why, but um, I've tried typing it out completely. I've tried just calling it vert manager. Basically, you end up reverting to the terminal, which is not hard. It's only a few commands. So we're going to go through the terminal install here. So this is using Ubuntu. So any Debian or Ubuntu based distros, Mint, whatever, they'll all be the same as long as you're using apt. I'll put commands down in the description below as well for if you're using an Arch based or Fedora distribution. They'll be very similar just using the appropriate package manager. So I'm just going to go ahead and install it here. Vert manager. Now I found depending on the distro that you're using, some don't include the QEMU KVM portion. So it doesn't hurt to just add the KEMU KVM, but you can actually just go ahead and hit enter and it'll show you all the packages that it's going to install. And you can see here, this includes the QEMU KVM. The KVM is the kernel virtual machine manager that's built into the kernel and gives you much better performance over using something like VirtualBox or VMware in Linux. So I'll go ahead and say yes and let this install. If you're using Pac-Man in Arch or a DNF in Fedora, all the same, it should install everything. If you're missing anything, you're gonna wanna just manually install the QEMU and the QEMU-KVM packages afterwards. So once it's installed and to make sure everything is running fine and the, the service is running properly, just go ahead and give it a reboot. I find that sometimes even if the service is running, it still won't allow you to start the vert manager unless you've rebooted. So now I've rebooted, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a system control status libvert D. And I'm just gonna verify that the service is active and running, which it is. This command up here is the same for most distributions that use systemd. So I'll go ahead and try and fire up vert manager and no errors, nothing. We're up and running, we're good to go. So if this will not start, it could be that you do not have the headers installed. One quick way of making sure you have the headers installed is to just try and install them. So you can do a uname a and you can see the kernel is 5.0.8-28 generic. So now with your package manager, you're just going to do install Linux headers, and we're going to go 5.8.0-28- generic. There you go. And you can see it is already installed, so not required. If for some reason you don't have them installed, it'll install them for you. Depending on what distro you have, when the kernel updates, it might not include the new headers, which means you'll have to do this again every time your kernel is updated. Not a big deal, but something to keep in mind if you're gonna be using QEMU a lot and one day it just stops working, it's probably because you had a kernel update and it didn't update the headers. Another thing you might run into is when you're opening the virtual machine manager, it's prompting you for your password. Now it's not a big deal, it'll still work. It's just if you find it annoying to have to enter in your password, there's a simple fix for that. So you're just gonna do a sudo user mod dash a dash big G and you're gonna do libvert and then your username. So whatever your username is, like mine is Dorian, 
you're going to do that and it's going to add the user to that group and then it won't prompt you for your password anymore. So now we have vert manager up and running Kimu and KVM is up and running. It's showing here in the list. So we can just go new virtual machine and I've downloaded an ISO already for Fedora. So we're going to do local install and you're going to go and find your installation media. So downloads Fedora. Here's the ISO over here. It's going to try to automatically detect it. If it doesn't and it doesn't for all distros, you can just uncheck this and just type generic default and then that'll work as well. So click forward and it's going to ask you how much RAM and how many processors you want to give to your virtual machine. So in this case, I'll say half of my RAM and half of my processors forward. And here you're going to create the disk image for the virtual machine. I'll show you where these will be stored. It is user var lib libvert images and you need permissions to see this and you can see right now it is empty. Now if you want to you can also say select to create custom storage and you can put it wherever you want. Just browse local and then pick wherever you want here. While I have this up there's this storage volumes here. I don't really use this because you have to refresh them. I just click browse and go find my file and that's fine. So this normally fills up with a bunch of stuff for me. It's up to you if you want to use it or not. I personally don't, but it's kind of like bookmarks. So if you want to open other stuff that's in your downloads, other ISOs, you can just click downloads, hit refresh, and the list will populate here. So I'm going to cancel this and I'm going to leave it here. I'll do 25 gigs, go forward and let's call it Fedora. And here you can customize further to your network interfaces, USB devices and whatnot. I'll go over that after, so I'll just leave that unchecked for now. However, another thing is if you want, you know what, I will show you because if you want a UEFI virtual machine, there's some extra steps to that. So if you leave this unchecked and you hit finish, it's just gonna boot up the ISO on the CD-ROM, but we're gonna do this and it'll bring us to the settings page. So these are all your settings for your virtual machine, name, description, and whatnot. You can change the chipset, and here's where you can select if you want a standard legacy BIOS system or a UEFI system. So I'm just gonna leave it as BIOS for now, and I'm gonna go over the other settings afterwards. So we'll just go begin installation, and it's going to create the virtual machine and boot up the ISO. So I'm gonna start Fedora Workstation Live. And you can see here now in that folder that I had open, you can see the QCOW2 file that was created. This is the 25 gig drive, the virtual drive that we created. I'm gonna close that. And for the virtual machine, I'm gonna say scale always. That way, if I make the screen bigger, it will scale with the screen. So I'll go through the Fedora installation real quick, and then I will come back and go over a few of the settings. So now Fedora is all installed. Now, if you're wondering about full screen and the resolution and everything, yes, this is running in a window, but I can hit this button here to go to full screen. And the little drop down here goes away. And this is to exit full screen and also to insert special keyboard commands. So uh, things that would normally happen on your machine, but you want it to happen on the guest machine. Now for the resolution, you just have to go into the settings of whatever distro or operating system you're running, and you're going to go to the display settings and just pick the one that matches your resolution. So for me, it's 1920 by 1080. Hit apply. Yeah, keep that. And now we're good. And now we're full screen. And since I set the settings earlier to always scale, it will scale according to how big the window is. So now this installation's done, so I can go ahead and shut it down and I'll show you some of the settings really quick in the virtual machine. So you can have it running and close the window. So if you're running it here and you close the window, you're gonna see here that it's actually still running. This is just like the viewport for the QEMU virtual machine. Now in this window, if you click the information button up here, and it may look different depending on your distribution. This looks different than it does on my other distros. This is using Ubuntu, so they have different icons. But anyways, here's where you can change everything about your system. 
So if you decided you didn't give enough CPUs, you could change that here. If you didn't give enough RAM or you gave too much, you can adjust it here. Your boot options here are gonna be a little bit more important. Now you have one IDE disk, which is that 25 gig uh, virtual drive that we gave it. It also shows you where it is on your system. And then there's a virtual CD-ROM. Here is where you can choose an ISO to boot from. So if you've installed something on a virtual machine and you decide you want to try a different distribution or a different operating system on that same virtual machine, you can choose a different ISO file here. See, I can go downloads here. If you've downloaded more, you can hit refresh. And once you've set that, you go back into your boot options, make sure the CD-ROM is selected and move it up and then hit apply. I'm not doing that right now, so I'm going to cancel that. Also here you have your NIC settings for your network interface card. The defaults work pretty well unless you have multiple network cards in your system and you want to set up something special. You shouldn't have to touch any of this. And then you have your mouse, keyboard, display spice. Don't touch this stuff. Video. You may want to change this if you're having video performance issues. QXL works fairly well for everything, but there's also VGA and Vert IO. The Vert IO works better in some distros than other. For myself, I leave it on QXL and it works most of the time pretty well. Now, another thing you can do here is add other devices. So add hardware, you can add a second hard drive if you wanted to just by adding another storage device here, just like when we initially created it. So create another drive. But you can also go USB host device. And let's say you have a USB stick that you want accessed in here. This is a USB stick that I have plugged into my machine. I can click on this, click on finish, and then it will be accessible from within the virtual machine. So if you have something on a USB stick that you want to boot off of in a virtual machine, you can do it this way. Now adding that USB device is great if you want something permanent or it's something you're going to be experimenting with a lot. If it's just a one-time deal, you can just go ahead and start your virtual machine, boot into it. And now I'm running the distro, it's up and running. So fire up a file manager here and you go virtual machine, redirect USB device. And I'm going to pick that Kingston drive, close. And now you can see here, stick has shown up. This is the USB device that's plugged into my system. Now, if you want to eject it, you can just hit eject like you normally would. You can go back to redirect USB device and just uncheck that box, click closed. And now it's going to be released from the virtual machine and it'll be available for your host system again. And it's ready for you to go ahead and unplug it. Now, if I go full screen here, as you can see, performance from distro to distro varies a lot. Um, it also depends on what hardware you're running and what kernel you're running on the virtual machine. Fedora is quite choppy. One thing you may want to consider when you're using distros is if you're using Wayland, you're going to get a bit more choppy performance. If you're using Xorg, it's a little bit smoother. Um, I don't know if it's just Wayland doesn't like KVM or KVM doesn't like Wayland, but you just get better, smoother performance using XORG. So that's something to consider as well. Well, I hope this uh, helps you get started with QEMU and KVM and Vert Manager. I find Vert Manager is the best and easiest GUI manager to, uh, to use QEMU. Of course, you could do everything from the command line, but it's just easier, especially when you have a bunch of machines, you want to change configurations and whatnot. Typically, I use virtual machines to distro hop. So I'll have multiple virtual machines with all different distributions, different versions, uh, different display managers and window managers and whatever. And I'll just play with them that way. If I like it enough, I will install it on hardware and just add it as an additional distribution to my system. My last video I did was on dual booting and multi booting. So you can check that out if you're interested in that. And then if I don't like the distro, I just delete the virtual machine or I wipe it and install a new distribution over top of it. So again, I hope this got you up and running with playing with virtual machines in Linux. It's not super complicated and I find this is better than VirtualBox and VMware. Although those are also great choices if you want to distro hop or just test things out as well. But QEMU, KVM and the Vert Manager are definitely my choice for virtual machines.
Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, click like, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't to already, and share this video on your social media. And until next time, bash on.